Hi, everybody. Um, I'm Tai. Uh, I'm going to talk about the homemade scientific clusters in Python. Uh, homemade means homemade. Uh, build your cluster at home. You don't realize, you, you don't rely on the other, uh, for example, use your own abandoned uh, desktop to build your uh, cluster and use on the scientific purpose. And I won't go through the details about the network uh, configuration, the computer, the computer's hardware stuff. Um, rather than, uh, uh, except that I would like to focus on how Python helped me to control and manage the, those configuration, configuration setup uh, instead of the theory part. Um, I'm from Taiwan, uh, an island in the north of the Philippines, a few kilometers away from here. Um, Philippines is, I, I, I like Philippines very much. The weather is good, the people are nice here. And the most important part is the, um, the PyCon Apex com uh, committees organized this wonderful event so we can have fun together uh, with you and in Python as well. And thanks for the committees and the host to, ar to arrange that. I create a co-working notebook on the platform on HackMD, so uh, you don't need to note down the details of every GitHub uh, link, URL, or document links, etc. cetera. So I summarized all the technical uh, details in that notebook. And the notebook is uh, pub publicly editable, so you can feel free to write down your note and share what you have have no, oh, no worries. I will show the link again in the end of this talk. So you, so p please, please feel, uh, p please relax and feel free to just put your hands on your, uh, anywhere but uh, write down, busy on uh, writing uh, notes. Okay. Okay. Um, I, before joining Canonical, um, I, will, I, I am a software uh, working for Canonical. Before joining Canonical, I was, was a physicist as the member of the, the Daya Bay Neutrino collaboration team. Our goal is to uh, figure out what's the mass of a very small particle in this universe. It's, it, the particle is likely zero mass, it means no mass at all. It's very small, smaller than any particle you have, you have known, smaller than atomic, smaller than electron, something like that. So uh, the team and me were awarded by the Breakthrough Prize. And the Breakthrough Prize was founded by the big company like Facebook, Alibaba, et cetera. Uh, the, the prize, they would like to inspire people who is working on fundamental uh, scientific research and, uh, and their uh, important uh, discovery. And I, so I, uh, my team and I were awarded in 2015. So my nickname, I, so, so I like, so I like uh, programming, I like uh, free software and open source software as well. I also like to study uh, interesting physics problems study uh, interesting physics problems in, of the universe. So my nickname on the internet, internet is my name, Ty, plus an uh, exponential constant, 2.7121828. That is uh, a constant that I think it could stand for the natural, so I could feel I myself could involve, still involve about uh, the beautiful universe from time to time. So contact me with, con uh, if you would like to reach out to me, uh, just uh, write this email to me. So, um, when saying goodbye to, uh, to DAPE collaboration, uh, I, uh, I was thinking, uh, is it possible for, for me to still for, combine both of my interests, my interest um, nature, physics, interesting problem, and also the programming stuff. Try to combine both of them. But the issue is, when I was in the days 
as a member of the DAPA team. I have the permission to use the supercomputer, the high performance, high performance cluster of the Lawrence Berkeley Natural Lab in US. These, that cluster is very powerful, so I can submit my, um, my application, try to simulate the neutrino detector, uh, try to see how it works, it, how, how it probably works, and try to figure out what's going on in those invisible world. And even it's so powerful, most of the time my job still has has taken has need to taken uh, to take more um, several weeks or several months to get my result. It's it's, it's very very large scale uh, problem that human want to figure out. And but when I uh, li when I left the team, my the first thing come to my mind is where uh, I don't have permission to use a cluster ed anymore. Where should I get the infrastructure if I would like to continue studying those interesting physics problems as usual? Yeah, so, so the first thing came to my mind, of course, I think uh, thanks for the uh, powerful uh, cloud technology recently, I think many of them has been used, has been used many kind of different uh, public cloud from Google, Amazon, something like that. Um, yes, there are plenty of computing resources are available only if you can pay the bill. Especially uh, for me, I, if I would like to study the, the issues, that, the problems that I want to know, I have to deploy more than 10 or 20 um, high, very powerful virtual machine on uh, GCE and then run it for few weeks or even more for a few months and I have I I don't think I will be very happy to pay the bill by the end of the month or the over the year. So I start I begin so 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 try and search for low cost uh, prototyping infrastructure um, is of course an intuitive uh, concern that comes to my mind. Of course I have I has already been thinking about the container-based or virtual machine-based uh, solution. Even more, I was thinking about everyone has his or her own old desktop or laptop at home. We don't use that anymore, but is there any way for me to reconnect or reuse those old uh, desktops so I can, I can boost or lower my computing cost? Okay, I won't go through the details, but this is a summary table that I, that I try different solutions and how I feel about that. Every solution, container-based container solutions, KVM-based solution, bare metal-based solution, or hybrid-based uh, solutions, they have their own uh, pros and cons. But um, I won't go through the details, but um, the point is for different kind aspect of virtualization solutions I use. The, this is the real world solution I, I choose for. Um, for containers, I use LSD. For KVN and bare metal, I use MESS. MESS is a product of canonical. Um, it means metal a service. It means you can reuse your bare metal machines in a very short time. It's very easy to install and, and enlist your uh, old uh, your all, your machines, probably powerful ma machine, not only limit to the old machine. And even more, you can hybrid uh, the KVN domains and the bare metal stuff together, managed by the mass in the meantime. And for the public cloud, I use GCE. That's very well known, known stuff. I won't go the details as well. So here comes the question: um, If I would like to play around with different uh, kind of uh, public or private cloud. Um, they are container based, they are bare metal based, or they are just VM based on the public cloud. I don't want to maintain, of course, I don't want to maintain different code base or different tool. So another question comes. Um, is it possible for me to 
uh, just maintain only one code base, but uh, the code base could be used for different kind of call. Um, the, S, the core idea is to build a HPC cluster. The essential part, uh, the, the essential part does not change it at all because for the class, for that kind of cluster, you always have a master node. You always has a login node. You always have you have always has has to have a storage node, of course, and you always want to have several uh, computing nodes as a client as the, the client node. So the model the model of the cluster itself does not change at all, no matter what kind of uh, cloud you actually uh, use as a your backend. So. I use another tool uh, called Juju. Uh, I control Juju. Juju use uh, will orchestrate deploy your cluster depends on the charm you implemented. So what I want, what I need to focus on is try is just try to make sure the try. What I need to focus on is maintain and develop the charm itself. Is is the what I want? What I need to do for all. So if I can just develop and maintain one code base but switch from cloud to cloud, that means I can uh, switch from different working model easy. For example, this is the daily working flow. Oh, by the way, this is my side project. This is, my, this is not mine. What I talked about today, just my side project, is not uh, canonical related or uh, daily job related. I, yeah, just side project. Uh, this is the working flow uh, also in my daily life. I, if I would like to prototype my, uh, for example, MPI program to run the program parallelly, I don't need to care about the volume stuff. I may, I may uh, rebuild my cluster with containers so, because the response is quick and I don't need to have, uh, I, it's not the time for me to have uh, Large computing resource, but when I feel okay, the program is ready. But I would like to benchmark the performance. E performance, for example, if I would like to uh, make sure the I/O performance is considerable or is just a piece of cake, I may benchmark the performance with uh, bare metal stuff. And if I know the benchmark is reasonable. I will probably redeploy the whole, the whole uh, cluster on the public cloud. And by the time when, I, when, by the time I use the public cloud, I will probably consider to um, focus on those the critical part that I need expensive power to quick get my result and destroy the cluster so I can save my money. This is very straightforward thinking. I think everyone. Not, not everyone, many of you must think about it already. So the core idea, um, write one trump and orchestrate your cluster on different clouds. Okay, let me take one uh, real world example here. Um, my, daily, my daily cluster, the Q system is a three engine. Um, The schedule. Okay, I use uh, Green Engine as the scheduler. Um, there, I, th I think Green Engine might be uh, not so uh, well known. If I talk about Slum, my probably there are more people know about that. Um, the cluster model is very simple. Uh, I have to have a master node, and I have to several client nodes, and. But even such in such a simple model, the those master and client node has to communicate have to communicate with each other interact interactively very much. So Trump itself is just a collection oh Trump itself is just a collection of executable scripts. But the point is when you try to um, the problem is you have you 
it's very difficult for you to know when to trigger this script and when to trigger another script and when to re-trigger that script in that node under some circumstance or conditions. So uh, if your deployment process is too complicated, you would probably consider to use the Trump tool for you uh, to write a very complicated Trump according your Trump layers. So it just looks like um, Trump, you write the Trump layers and compile with the Trump tool and you get a real Trump that deployed by Juju. So Juju could know how to work in, uh, how to rebuild your cl cluster based on the final Trump here. And the, main, the mainstream recommended way to write uh, Trump layers are Python. Here is the example here. Um, to write a Trump layer, the core idea is to think in reactive way. Um, okay, I know it's kind of probably kind of, kind of hard to read, but no worries, the keyword here is what you need to know. What, um, to write the Trump layers in reactive pattern way means that you can use the when or when not syntax like that. And thanks for the Trump helpers, we, we can implement the when or when not syntax with the decorator, Python decorator. Um, in this case, when I would like to bootstrap a master node, when to install those bootstrap the, the contents of this node, when this Debian package is installed, when this package is installed, and when itself does not install at all, then bootstrap itself. So you will get a master node here. The entry point of your function is not the main function at all. It just it will decide it by the status of for when or when not. This is the thinking way of reactive pattern. And similar to the client node, uh, when the, this package is installed and the service itself is not ready, bootstrap itself. So you have to, uh, two isolated systems here for now. But from the master point of view, the master node itself does not know where, uh, if this client node is created or not. It just know until there is a relation joint. A relation in the trunk model is also uh, there, um, implemented by, we call it interface layer. So when a uh, relation join, join here, when the relation touch your node, we call this contact point is an endpoint. You can write code like when the endpoint join this node, publish something, forecast. The unit itself, the master here, does not care about where the information was published or broadcast. It just published alongside with the relationship, relation. And from, and the client, the client node will, something happened in the client, client side happens as well. Um, but the master node itself does not care about what happened at, in the client side. You just take care and listen to the endpoint to see if there anything new or config change or something like that. If when the endpoint something is changed, something is changed, up, uh, do something. In this case, update the client config. That means um, a client node is, is created and published is published information to the master node and the master node will do something for the client. So, it, so this is a typical process that combines two units interactively. Um, this is a very simple uh, example, but in a real world case, you probably would like to scale up your, your uh, service or cluster, so you, you, could just, you could just, because you have defined the relationship with, the, the relation with your charm already, so it's very easy for you to scale up your uh, cluster easy. Just tell Juju, do the similar thing 
for the other two more units, and you are, you can scale up your uh, cluster within few minutes. Okay, and that's summary. Uh, charms are written in Python. Uh, in fact, it was written in the other language, but uh, Python is the most in, uh, recommended way because uh, Charm tool itself was is written in Python as well. So the com compatible uh, features is the best so far. And okay, and and design your Charm uh, think in React reactive pattern way. And the second point is um, trunks are compiled from trunk layers and implement a trunk layer is more recommended because because you can implement more more complicated interactive uh, deployment algorithm. If you are interested in the pre precise definition of React pattern, you can refer to Wikipedia as well. Okay. Um, here, what I talk in the previous 20 minutes is just confined in this box uh, about the infrastructure. I use Juju to control different kind of private or public calls. It could be container-based or mass-based or, or virtual machine-based. And when the inf infrastructure is ready, it's time for us to do real stuff, to do some real science, scientific uh, stuff, like uh, I would like to install my application in this cluster. And as an official cluster, most of the time, they, there are many people who would like to use the same infrastructure, infrastructure as well. So you probably would like to make sure your execution environment is the same. So I, so the cluster I built, if you check the hack and the uh, sharing notebook, you, the GitHub cluster will install the singularity for you as well. And singularity it has Python SDI as well. So Python does play an important role uh, in the whole solution, the, the whole solution for me to my goal is to actually run this application written by me and my friend and to, uh, to for some CFD, com computing fluid uh, dynamic issues. What, we, what I have done for, uh, for this stuff is to get this kind of uh, result, for example. And at least the uh, Python related stuff in the right hand side. So this is the uh, cluster that you will get if you uh, git clone my uh, cluster, chomp cluster uh, source, source space and run it with Juju. And it's demo time here. I would like to demo uh, what it will look like with the code base and uh, deploy this cluster within few minutes and run, get this result. It's a demo, but it's not a live demo. I, I don't. It will take a lot of time, several minutes uh, to deploy. So I record the process for you. And you might. Although it might look like a live demo, but actually it, it does not. It's not. OK, firstly, I, uh, there is no uh, deploy this uh, model in this cluster in this model, there's nothing inside. There's no units and nothing. So uh, let me go to the trunk base, code base, which you can clone. Probably it's too small. Let me get to bigger, OK? And go to the, the master trunk layer and try to, before I build it, uh, there's, there's, a, there's no built trunk at all in the temp directory. And then, hold on. OK, go to the master trunk there. 
and build the code, build the charm there right now. So you can see the build charm will be located in the temp temporary uh, folders under charm builds. And do the similar step for the client node as well. Is it uh, big enough for you to watch this? Is the caterpillar, caterpillar big enough? Right. Okay. Okay. It's just a bit dark. <laughs> okay. Okay. Of the bad quality <laughs> okay. of uh, our projector. Oh, no, no problem. Okay. Um, so the master and client nodes are not built as a real trump. I am going to use the nose trump to deploy this juju. So you can see. Uh, let me. So this is the com the the key command. Deploy. You can see Juju uh, deploy. And which which serial, multi-serial would I be deploy? I specify this is I would like to my cluster is built on top of Neo here and the uh, chart itself is local chart. And I here I use some keywords it means uh, I would like to outstretch the node I use is a uh, virtual node which is evident in this case. Because I'm going to uh, deploy a master node. The master, the, the master, master node itself does not take care of the responsibility of computing uh, power. So it just take care of the job submission and schedule the job you would like to uh, compute by the client node later. So it does not need to be very powerful. So deploy here. Okay. When it is deployed, you can see at first that there is nothing, but there is a master unit uh, is going to be deployed here. Let, let me. Okay. The deploy may take some more time, so let me speed up the the process. Okay, smaller. Oops. Okay, and do the same thing for the client node. The deploy may take some more time, so let me speed up the process. Oops. Oops. Okay, I speed up too much. I. <laughs> okay. Similar process, but uh, I still, I still ask the other two units to get the. A, a typical cluster and the deploy takes time as well. Let me speed up. You can see the process is from very, from the very beginning to deploy a bare metal cluster. Okay. 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 Oops. Okay, when
Okay, I get the image. The, this image was uh, pre prepared uh, by me, so I had to stop calling the application inside the image. So the user could execute is okay, okay. So the user could execute uh, the seven uh, seven script in this combined script with this image. So you can see it. Okay, this is the driving script. How the driving script looks like is written in Python as well as a wrapper and run the code. So all the stuff was running on my old and abandoned desktop I used five or ten years ago and get the result here and yeah and look. So we can get a lot of VTU file that could uh, show and like uh, this picture. This picture is a classic uh, CFD question. Python helps to orchestrate uh, complement deployment process as well. Uh, you, you can hand, um, it helps us a lot so you can help, you can handle the complicated deployment at home by yourself as well. And besides uh, your charm with in reactive pattern thinking way and implement charm with Python and I don't talk, ab talk about this very much but uh, you can actually spread your charm over the charm store. Um, you can write your charm there and upload to charm, charm store. The, the store is public so the other could uh, download your charm very easy. They don't need to use charm tools to rebuild the charm again. And if you are interested in um, this kind of infrastructure or a mature scientific work, uh, um, feel free to uh, file a pull request against my uh, GitHub and let's do some science. And yeah, I promise that I will show the <laughs> notebook in the end of this talk. Thank you for your listening. Okay, let's open the floor to questions. I have some, but it might my questions might actually be stupid because uh, I'm not much of a DevOps guy. Uh, yeah, I don't really know much about orchestration, but I've heard of similar tools. Like uh, you, you mentioned Juju, and they say one similar one is like Chef and Puppet. And how how are they different, and what are the advantages of? Okay, um, actually, oh. okay. Okay, for my point, in my opinion, uh, Chef and Poppy is not a competitor of Juju actually. They could, your charm could actually be written or implemented with Chef and Puppy. Uh, for example, um, Juju charm are actually friends of Chef and Poppy. For example, you can uh, use Juju to connect, you, you can use Juju to um, integrate with the other clouds like a mass cloud or a GD cloud but uh, Chef may not take care of the, de of the system deployment very well. For example, you may not, it's the same for assemble as well, you may not uh, decide which distribution you would like to deploy at the very beginning. Chef and Poppy, mo they focus on the later phase of deployment of they focus on the test when the system, the operation system is ready. So I, so Chef and Puppy is not a uh, competitor. It's, they are friends of Chom. Uh, yes, yes please. Thanks for your asking. I really want to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
actually, um, what what's my uh, what I focused on recently is about the CFD question. Um, the host, thanks for the host has mentioned that uh, CFD means computing fluid dynamic. For example, um, the car or rocket. When the rocket fly in, in the air, what's the best design of the rocket? It's about this is this kind of question or problem is is related to this uh, CFD question. So uh, my friend and I um, write. Oops. Okay. Um, if you are interested in what the equation that the real the, the science, science physics problem that I'm working on, you can just Google GitHub and Softcode. This is the name of the project. Softcode is a it's a CFD framework that for people to uh, simulate a, sim a CFD question in an easy way. You can use Python to model model your CFD question. Like you can use Python to model how the rocket looks like and how what kind of physics you would like to apply to that kind of rocket. And the framework, Softcon itself is a framework. And the framework will help you to focus on the modeling part and handle the physics equation part at the bottom level. We have, my friend and I has already implemented uh, the part of the physics, so just foc so users just focus on the application part. By the way, um, I am just I am, I am the contributor of this project. My friend uh, Yong Yu is the main architecture of this project. Thanks for your asking. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. Thanks for your asking again. Actually, um, similar to the chat and public question earlier, OpenStack is actually the friend of Juju. You can deploy OpenStack on top of Juju. You don't need to worry about. I, okay, some. I. I expect some the other uh, some of you may ask, uh, what about OpenStack and what about the K, A uh, Kubernetes? Both of them are, are the same. OpenStack and Kubernetes are very hard to deploy and set up. It's very very hard. It's, I recently in the past few weeks I read an article. Uh, I think it written by. A Google, a Googler, uh, he said, "Don't try to set up your Kubernetes from scratch because it's so hard." So, if you like to deploy or set up your OpenStack or Kubernetes, you can consider to use Juju because there, the Juju Tron ecosystem has already developed the Tron to develop to deploy uh, Kubernetes and OpenStack. So you could just you could just use Juju and decide which kind of cloud. For me, I actually deploy OpenStack with my own desktop. I have several uh, very old and uh, and abandoned desktop. I connect those desktop those desktop with Mass, and then use OpenStack Trump to deploy OpenStack with my desktop. You can replace the desktop into a public cloud or your private cloud. In fact, I mean bare metal cloud stuff so you can deploy easier. If you are interested in more details, you can just Google OpenStack and Juju. You can get how to do it. There are tutorials as well. But we don't focus on that today. <laughs> 